Okay, um, now we're on to what most of you will say, you know, finally, some kind of fun element to this because everything so far I've been planning, we've been thinking about what we're going to do. Now we're coming to actually sketching some of those designs. Uh, some of you will have done the homework ex uh, ex uh, activities and exercises. That's all about design. This is the reason why uh, you've been spending so much time about designs and looks and feels and the way an app looks. So, Section 11, storyboards of the new user interface. Now, before we carry on further, I will want to highlight pages 52 and 53, very, very important. Go for the activities there first before you get started. Now, there's not really much to talk about in this section, purely because it's everything that that's in this section are sketches. You're going to have to do sketches, physically do sketches, but you have to be neat. Use a pencil, use a ruler, organize it. Think about consistency, think about what things will stay the same on every single page to get that you know corporate professional feel so if you have a logo the logo should be in every single page and it should be in the same spot and same size if you have certain bars to have that kind of color scheme where is that going to go the background the background could change depending on two things it depends it depends on you know, if you have like a section for the business hours page, appointments page, uh, charity page, and if it's still in that section, there might be a different color scheme for that because you might have buttons that match that. But it's really down to you. But the button design should be the same. The fonts should be the same. So it's those kind of things there. And this has to be done on paper, like I said, blank paper, and then it should then be scanned and then pasted it in, in here. Now, I've got a list of things that you need to do. And in each sketch, there are a number of things you need to include. So a massive list of things you need to actually do for the high marks. Now, let's go for them one by one. First one, a welcome page. A welcome page could simply be uh, like um, this one here. Very simple. Um, but that's just an example. Now, you can pretty much uh, guess and bet that every single page after this will have that blue, white kind of th feel and theme throughout this, uh, this design just to keep it consistent because that's who they are. And you can see that it's made by the same people. Um, you can see that this one here may have actually been made by this company as well. It's two different pages on Google, but you can see from the button design and the background, it's very, very, very similar. So you can pretend, you cannot pretend, sorry, you can assume that it's the same company. So you need to think about those elements as well. Um, Anyway, as I was saying, so you need to make, make a welcome page, a business hours page, so that page will be, so in essence, guys, from the welcome page, it might be worth having uh, a menu page in between them, them, between them two, right? So welcome page will um, give the customers, the clients, or the patients the opportunity to press start or choose a language or choose speech or uh, increase in the size. After that point, you need to give them the opportunity because how are they going to navigate to the other pages? So there must be one page that has buttons to go to these pages, okay? That lo that's the logic that, that tells you, okay, from this page, you can go to there. So then you have to say, okay, from that page, it's going to go to the business hours page. From the business hours page, you should be able to go back to uh, the welcome page or the menu page, okay? So it might be worth having like a menu page. Main menu. Okay, so from the main menu, you need to go to business hours. Then you have a page that's about appointments, where you create appointments, cancel appointments. Might be worth putting something in here where you sign in as well. So, so customers who already have a, a, an appointment can say that that they're here, so the doctor knows, or they can create a new one, or they can cancel one. Uh, there's going to be a page about finding the closest pharmacy. Um, there should be a page about the charity, the current charity the doctors are do, uh, they're working on, the notices that they may have. So you'll see there's a number of pages that you need to do, but there will be links to each one, and there must be buttons in each one that makes them makes it easy to go back. Uh, there will be other pages as well. So, for example, if someone's signing in, then the next page after that would be, okay, you're signing in, so who are you? So in this, you have to use the common sense here to say, okay, from this page, I haven't mentioned it, but logic would dictate that from you signing in, you need to say who you are and which doctor you come to see and what time your appointment was for. If you're creating an appointment, then, then you need to have a page that says, okay, hey, what's your first name? What's your last name? What's your address? Who would you like to see? What time do you want it to? What date? And maybe there's a calendar that you can click from. If they're cancelling, there needs to be uh, a page that says, okay, what's your name? What time was your appointment? Uh, and press cancel. Something like that. So just because I have these here doesn't mean this is all the pages these are the starting points you have to then decide what are the pages that you need from there 
So what do you need in each page? Because at the moment, all I've talked about is what is in there. The design is up to you. You have to decide the buttons, the way the buttons look, where the buttons will be. Will it be at the top, the bottom, the side, the middle, the sizes? This is why doing this research is so useful. It might be worth going through Google, finding some designs, coming up with some. Uh, I mean, I found this website here. This is a real company that does this for in real life, and this is their picture. This is them. Uh, and what might be interesting to see, you know, just to see how much they actually charge. And if you look at this, in this for their simple design, they charge um, one thousand eight hundred twenty-three pounds including VAT, and that's for the first year. And after that, they charge almost £300 at, uh, for every single year. So, you know, that's just for the simple design. So there's big money involved making these kind of things. So once you've got these designs and you've sketched them out and you've come up with these colour schemes, you don't need to, by the way, actually put colour in here. This is just you sketching it, so it needs to be black and white. You then need to ad address these points here. Show where each item is going to be placed, where, Give an idea of the size of each item. So you don't just say the size of the button, just draw it. So you're given some uh, some idea of proportions from the design itself. Um, give an idea of the font style, the colors. Remember, you're using your mood board here to give you inspiration. You're going to give ideas of icons and images that you're going to use, again, from the mood board. The colors that will be used. Okay, where are those colors going to be? Is it going to be in the background? Is it going to be using the buttons? Is it going to be on the bar or something? Demonstrate the method of interaction. So is it going to be with a mouse, click, or a finger press? Now, it's pretty obvious from these examples. These are all finger press. You can see that is done by hand. You can see from this picture here, someone's actually doing it by hand. Look at that. That's a nice way of showing if you're male or female with some symbols as well as uh, buttons. You can see here, start all over. So it's worth, worth looking at some of these examples just to give you some inspiration on how to actually design your your designs. Now remember, this is a practice, and the real thing, you won't be able to do this, so you have to look at uh, some examples to give you inspiration. Uh, going back, you need to think about um, what, sorry, pre present what the user interface will look like when accessibility features are applied. So you're gonna have one design for normal users, people who don't have any accessibility needs. But then what if someone comes in and says, I want, the text will be larger. So then what will it look like? So you'll have to redo all those screens that you've designed, all of these, yeah, apart from the welcome page, on and show, the, show how they would look if the text was larger or if the background color was changed because the user, the patient or the customer said they wanted to be changed. Um, you need to show, describe non-visual elements such as sound. Will there be sound used in every single screen? What is that sound? Uh, where is it going to be shown? Why is it going to be there? How does it help? Who does it help? And you need to describe as well um, where the user will be taken when they click from one thing to another. So you need to say, okay, when they click here, you might say with an arrow, um, when click this button, it goes back to main menu. Simple. Yeah. If they click on charity page, it goes back to this page. You might say, okay, charity page, you might want to be in fancy about this and actually have a button that says, um, one button takes them to the official charity page, whoever it is, Macmillan's or whatever it is, children in need, whoever it might be, or a page, a button that takes them to the page where they actually, they can actually give some charity, some some uh, some uh, donations. So where does it go? So have a look through this, ladies and gents. Um, if you are doing this from home, I suggest you pause here. Uh, but if you have access to this, of course, you can scroll down and work at your own leisure. Most of this will be, like I said, on A4 pieces of paper and you scan it in. Uh, and if you want to address these questions underneath each sketch and type it all up, that's completely fine. So you can have it as a sketch and on the sketches you just show arrows to say what fonts this is and that and have more, the majority of these questions addressed underneath each screenshot or scanned item. That's completely fine. Or you could just do it on the sketches themselves. Just make sure it's organized and nice and neat. Um, this will take a lot of time. Uh, but this is the beginning of your design. If you get this right, the next part, Learning Game C, will be so much easier.